come to anjan gcp data engineering so in this video we are going to learn how to use python client libraries to create a google cloud storage buckets and uh, managing uh, buckets and also how to manage uh, storage objects with respect to google cloud storage buckets okay so we'll see some use cases why we have to use uh, client libraries so we can uh, fully automate the process of creation of google cloud storage buckets and uh, uploading objects and downloading objects and also if you want we can delete the google cloud storage bucket and as well uh, required objects this process can be fully automated using this client libraries okay the second one so if there is a scenario where we have to upload uh, bulk objects right and if you have to upload multiple files and if you have to upload very large size objects into google cloud storage programmatically definitely you can use client libraries to do that okay and the third one so if you have to periodically sync data from the source system to the target system in our case gcs is the target system uh, if you have to perform that sync process definitely you can use python client libraries uh, to do that uh, based on our requirement we can schedule that process using some scheduling tool okay so in the demo using python client libraries we are going to create a bucket and uh, we'll try to fetch few details related to the bucket like bucket metadata and also bucket acls okay and uh, we will be focusing much on uploading storage objects okay so we will see a few examples related to uploading single objects and uploading multiple objects we'll also see a process of downloading multiple objects using python client libraries and finally we'll see deleting bucket okay so let's get into the demo in this demo we are going to perform all these tasks one by one so before that we need to install uh, google cloud storage python client libraries for that we are using this command So I'm using Cloud Shell environment to perform all these tasks. So since this library is already installed into my Cloud Shell environment, it will basically display a message saying this this requirement is already satisfied. But in your case, this library is not installed into your environment, then it will be installed into your specified environment. Okay. So now we are good to go. As a first task, we are going to create a Google Cloud Storage bucket. Okay. So this is the bucket I'm going to create. So before that, we'll go to the Google Cloud Storage environment and let's see if there are any buckets already available. I could see there are two buckets already available. I'm going to create this bucket. Okay. So basically, I'm using this function to create that bucket. So this is using storage client and um, here there are other details. It is taking bucket name as an input argument. This is the bucket which we are going to create and uh, the storage class. So in our case, we are using standard class. There are four storage classes available, right? Standard and cool and near line. Okay. So like that on our cable. So it's up to you which one to use. Okay. So I am using standard class. So now we are going to execute this function so that it will create this bucket. Okay. So I'm just calling this function just by passing this input argument, which is already has a value in it okay this is a script which is having all those functions already available okay so we are going to execute one by one in the first step it will create that bucket okay now you can see it has created this bucket now go to the google dot storage environment and refresh your page you would see that bucket is created okay this is the bucket which we have created if you go to the code you can see the same bucket name okay so now in the second task we are going to list the bucket using python client library so we'll define a storage client and we are further using that client to call other methods to perform related task okay so for listing the buckets we are using list buckets so just execute that function run your now if you see your google cloud storage environment it has three buckets that's why it has listed three 
bucket names okay so the next step so listing bucket metadata okay so this is taking one input argument that is bucket name and you will have to list metadata related to this bucket okay same thing storage client and calling related method okay it's going to display all these details related to that bucket the bucket id name storage class a location okay there are other metadata information okay we can list it down you can see all this information bucket id and the name and storage class and the location and all those details okay now in the next step we are going to upload an object okay so here in this task we are going to upload a single object okay so it is basically taking three input arguments one is bucket name and source file name and also destination blob name you will have to provide the object name which will be uploaded into your google cloud storage environment so we are going to upload this particular file which is already available in my local file system that is cloud shell environment this is a file name you can see that same file name over here we are going to upload this file okay now this file has been uploaded just go to your bucket and uh, just refresh it now you can see this file is uploaded we are trying to fetch one particular object acls okay so access control list okay what are the permissions available right and policies available on top of a particular object okay so i'm using this bucket and the same object that we have uploaded few minutes back okay so let's do that so right now so i'm the owner of this project so i have owner access and uh, these are the default acls already available in any of the object uploaded into your google Plus storage back listing objects okay so so this is taking bucket name as input argument so it's going to list whatever the objects available within this bucket okay let's do that so that bucket has only one objects so that's why you can see one object is listed next step how to upload multiple objects into a specified bucket so so this is where we will be focusing much and this is very much helpful in most of the real time scenarios okay so now so far you have seen the storage object client creation and we have used the client to call other methods okay but here we are going to use a, a class called transfer manage so it is providing different features we'll discuss them one by one okay so this particular method or function is taking bucket name and we are going to upload these three files okay and uh, you are uploading these files from your local environment okay just uh, see how many these files are already available or not you can see all these files are already available one is video file and uh, there are two csv files this is one file this is one file and this is a video file okay so before we upload it let's delete the existing one so here actually it is using transfer manager and if you observe it is also using input argument called workers that means when you are trying to upload multiple files into google cloud storage bucket it's going to distribute that process onto multiple workers here we have specified eight workers so it's going to distribute that work to these eight workers so that work will be done in parallel uploading process will be faster in this case observe this code right so it is using client and taking bucket name and input argument and here it is using transfer manager to call its underlying method that is uploading many objects okay so here it is using certain input argument number of workers and source directory and also file name so basically it's using list of file names so it's a python list okay so in a loop it will try to call each and every object name and it will upload it into your google cloud storage bucket by the way this process will be distributed across all those workers that we have specified okay in our case it is eight and it will speed up the uploading process okay i hope this is clear 
We will also see how much time it is taking. That's why I have placed start time and end time within the code. So it has uploaded all three files and it took almost uh, 25 seconds. Okay. So if you try to upload these files in a loop using your uh, normal process, okay, without using this parallel workers, it will take more time definitely. Okay. I hope this is clear. Here in this example, we'll try to upload large files in size. So for that, we are going to use the same feature called parallel workers. And also there is one more feature that is chunk size. That means this entire file will be divided into equal chunks. So here we have also specified this chunk size. So if you see 32 into 1024 into 1024, that means each chunk will be divided into 32 MB in size. Okay. So it will also use the transfer manager, same process, it's just that you have an additional mechanism to divide your file into equal chunks so that it will speed up your upload process. Here actually, this will be used to upload single large object. So anyway, this is a video file. We are going to upload this file. This is already available in this bucket. So let's delete it. Now execute this method function so that it will upload that large file in chunks and in parallel process let's see how much time it will take to upload that large file it just took few seconds to upload that large object now we will also see downloading multiple objects okay using the same process that is transfer manager and also we will also provide the worker that means all these objects will be downloaded in parallel using this workers so here it is taking bucket name and uh, these are the objects which are already available in this bucket we are going to download it to this particular path okay so first of all let's go and check our bucket if it has these three objects yes it has three objects now go back to your cloud shell environment and check its destination folder if it is available so right now we don't have any files now we will execute this function now this has downloaded three files. Let's go to that folder. Now you can see all these files downloaded to this particular folder. Okay. Finally, we will see how we can delete the bucket just by specifying its name. Okay. Now we're going to delete this bucket. Okay. So before you delete any bucket, make sure that bucket is empty. Otherwise it will throw an error. So right now it has three files in it let's try to delete this bucket and let's see so it has thrown an error it's saying the bucket you try to delete is not empty so you will have to clear all the objects before you delete any bu bucket so let's go to that bucket and delete all these objects now it is empty now go and run your code once again now it has deleted that bucket go to the bucket section go to the google dot storage and try to refresh now you don't see that bucket so so these are the different things you can do using python client libraries so you can automate this entire process in future videos we will also discuss a real time scenario where we can exactly use this google cloud storage python client libraries to upload objects okay and how we can automate that process so that's it for this video we will meet in the next video